You read that right. Even empty space has energy. You probably heard of the phrase, anything that has mass has energy. It's that equals MC squared crap, even though it's amazingly more than that. I made a video about that too. But today we're going to talk about even weirder shit than that. Hi, my name's Beam. At least, that's my nickname. Anyways, I'm here to teach you some science. Every piece of matter in the universe is also a wave. Let me back up. Every particle in the universe is a wave. There's a waveform attached to every particle as if it's its name. Like the way people run around with unique personalities, particles have unique waveforms. When we add particles together to form bigger objects, like well, humans, dogs, your phones, those individual waveforms also add up. The more waveforms you add, the less it looks like a uniform wave and you start to lose your wave-like property. This is because those waveforms don't happen to be in sync all the time. At some points, they cancel each other out, and add and cancel and add. The overall result of adding your particle's waveforms is some weird mess that is you. A consequence of particles also being waves is that those particles act messy. Compared to big objects, particles take a little bit more to predict in terms of behavior. So push a ball and it goes there. For particles, if we push that way, it can go a variety of ways, but we still have an idea of where it can go. The bottom line is this, the world of the tiny is probabilistic, and it's basically something that we need to accept, that fluctuations are a natural phenomena, and these fluctuations aren't our own limitations on trying to observe really tiny things. They're not errors, and we know that from experiments. This is something that's confused me for such a long time, to be honest. Fluctuations in the scale of tiny things isn't the same as accidentally disturbing those tiny things when we try to look at them, try to understand what's going on with them. Ozawa defined error and disturbance, where when we try to minimize the error for the position, for example, there's a specific measure disturbance for the momentum as well. Trying to minimize the error for one property inevitably causes a disturbance for the other. Apparently, there's a fluctuation that's natural to the world of the tiny. I remember being so in awe about quantum mechanics in high school, and I still am, but that was really the first time that I would get amazed at this kind of stuff, because what a lot of quantum mechanics books tells us, tell us is that Randomness is simply something that you have to deal with. It's there. It's present. You can't control every single thing. You can't control every single thing, basically. And this is where it gets even spicier. Whether or not empty space has zero energy, as it should, is based on a probability as well. In other words, even the existence of a particle, which also contains energy, is based on a probability. How can empty space have a likelihood of containing or not containing a particle. That seems a little non-sciencey. What is going on? The next idea you need to understand is that the whole universe is made up of quantum fields. At least this is one of the best models out there of our universe. Think of a quantum field as a playground where particles can interact with each other where things containing mass gravitate towards each other, or where things with like charges repel. You need a quantum field for these particles to interact with each other. We need a playground. And we know there's no stopping so many of the particles around us from actually interacting with each other, so we assume that these particles have playgrounds literally everywhere. In other words, these quantum fields be all up in our business. Even in the vacuum of space, light, which is made up of particles called photons, can pass through huge ass distances. This is illustration enough that literally everywhere is a quantum field, if even in empty space, those light particles can still travel around. The thing about that quantum field is that, well, it's quantum. Its nature is also based on an inherent randomness. So whether this quantum field is completely empty or not, never has one answer every time we ask it, which is weird as fuck. Fluctuations occur all the time, and you might want to read about the Casimir effect too if you're still not sure that these fluctuations actually occur. There's so many possible energy values that a virtual particle can have. If we consider every single possible particle and take their corresponding energy and add all of them up to get a kind of amount of energy per space in empty space, that value is huge as fuck. It's infinite, in fact. So let's assume only really low energy virtual particles have the biggest chance to exist, such as a virtual photon. What we end up getting is a value around 10 to the 112 
joules per cubic centimeter. But the very definition of a vacuum is that the average energy density is zero, right? See, the smaller our interval is for trying to determine the energy of empty space, the more we see that it's not always zero every time we check. In other words, the more we try to be precise about the energy being a specific value, the more confusing it becomes and the closer we get to that 10 to the 112 value. That 10 to the 112 value is huge. Can we use that energy? No. Because the way that useful energy works is that we need differences in energy values between things. So heat is only really useful to us if there's a cold region to put that heat into. And yeah, so that 10 to the 112 is big, but if at the base of every empty region in the universe is this value, then we can't really use this energy. So if we want to power a spaceship or an espresso machine, it's not gonna happen. Or in better science terms, it's not likely to happen because, you know, someone might discover something in the future and be like, yo, we can actually do this and yeah, prove everyone wrong right now. But that, that's a good thing. But anyways, let me just give you a moment to digest all of that. You might be thinking, you know, ah, what a bummer, we can't use that energy, blah, 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 blah. But this is where it gets even more intense. And this is my favorite part. Because this average is supposed to be zero in a vacuum. There's a specific balance that you have to have in a vacuum. So the convention is that when these virtual particles pop in and out of existence, they come in pairs. One has a positive frequency value and one has a negative frequency value. So individually, they have their own energy values. But the longer you try to observe empty space, the more your, the bigger your time period is for observing empty space, you have to consider the average energy. And what happens is that their frequency values, they basically cancel each other out, leaving us with the average energy density of zero in a vacuum. But in the presence of really strong gravitational fields, this balance can be thrown off. You might have an idea of what kind of strong gravitational field I'm talking about. Yes, black holes. What else could I be talking about? So this vacuum energy concept becomes even more fascinating, and this has something to do with Hawking radiation. So I mentioned this in a previous video, but I didn't really get into it. It was just there to be mentioned. So this time we're going more in depth. So I hope you watched that video as well. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you next time.